Hello guys, welcome to our channel Hustlers Gen and today we will be learning prediction using unsupervised machine learning. So guys this data set has been provided by uh, the company I am doing internship in and they have given the actually you can see is the iris data set they have given and they have asked uh, to find out the optimum number of clusters and represent it visually. So you will be using the elbow method in this uh, program so uh, stay tuned for the whole video and we'll be learning how you can find out the optimum number of cl clusters using the code and uh, a reminder if you haven't checked out the previous video in which I have uh, explained the super um, how you can use the supervised machine learning problem and use the uh, linear regression model uh, in like in 60 seconds I summed up uh, all of it so you can uh, check out the video and let's get started with this guys and as you can see this is our data set first we improve uh, import uh, the important libraries like numpy panda pandas matplotlib seaborn and then we import the data set using pd dot read underscore csv and this is the data set the data set we see uh, we have the six columns with id sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and species so guys when we have this data set and we when when we want to cluster this uh, into uh, different clusters one thing we have to keep in mind that data this column of id is not actually important for us so first what we do is we drop this id column and because as it's not uh, giving us any information about the data um, practically so in for us these five columns are important so first we uh, do the exploratory data analysis you, uh, you must be knowing for that first uh, we do df dot head to get the first five rows of our data set and do df dot tail to get the last five rows of our data set then df.info is one of the codes which help us to know if there is any uh, null uh, values in our data set so here as you see all are uh, not null so we have no null values is good for us also we know come to know about the uh, data type of uh, the different values in our data set then using df.describe we come to uh, know about the statistical variation in our data like the mean standard deviation 20%, 50%, 75% quartile ranges, minimum and maximum. So that helps us to know uh, the that gives an idea about the statistical variation in our data. Then df.isnull is a very important command which helps us to calculate the total number of null, null, null values actually. So as we have null, not null here, naturally the sum will be zero. But for example, if it shows null, so you do df.info and find out that it is showing null value in your data set but you have to know how many of uh, them are null so this helps us uh, this code helps us that is null so df is null means whether it has null and we are summing it up okay so then we use df.nunique to find out the unique number of values so i personally used it for this species uh, column because as you see we came to know that in our iris data set we have the iris setosa and iris virginica so whether the with there are any other species present so for that we use the uh, df dot uh, df species dot unique call so one thing you have to remember that when we do for a uh, df the whole data frame we are using n unique but for in particular column we are using unique that's one thing you can remember then we use df dot code this uh, helps us to find out the relation between the uh, various data uh, different columns we have like sepal length will have uh, is having a negative relation with width sepal width so this helps us to uh, later decide which data will be better chosen like sepal length and width is having a high correlation so uh, maybe using the both together will be of use now we will be using it later guys so then we do the data visualization in which we plot the heat map here uh, we write sns.heatmap df.core what it, so it's actually the visual representation of this frame we are seeing and n not equal to true it helps us to get the values numerical values on the uh, on our chart so yes then we what we do is uh, this this part is actually helping us in our calculation later so as you see df species df species is this column we have and equal to equal to setosa means we are considering only those species we are having uh, iris setosa as the value so uh, by this code df species equal to iris setosa we are talking the, uh, taking this data frame uh, which is having iris setosa and storing it in df1 similarly uh, all those which will be having iris virginica uh, like all those rows 
and columns means all those having uh, the rows as iris virginica will be stored in df3 okay and then we sc scatter plot it and uh, here in scatter plot we need x and y and of course color shows the color we are using to use the scatter plot and label uh, helps us to give the uh, legend form but but what is important is that we are using df1 so in df1 it was actually those species which were iris setosa and we are considering the petal length of it so we are considering the petal length of it so those iris setosa which are having petal length okay that is what we are plotting in the x-axis and a petal width we are plotting in y-axis and we are doing for all of the var uh, various species that helps us to get the overall scatter plot of the data we have okay uh, if you have any problem in any of the course you can ask me in the comment section i will be trying to uh, explain as much as possible I, and i think it is important for you then we use this df.imp uh, why you may ask so the reason is that uh, we have this column of species which is not actually important uh, for our this k means clustering part so what we do is we drop instead of dropping it we uh, use this i lock function uh, which uh, where this column means we are uh, we, this means uh, we are considering all the rows and 0 to 4 is actually considering columns 0 1 2 3 so it's a documentation if you check of i lock it doesn't consider the last one okay so uh, when we see this uh, df df is this so this is 0 after we drop id uh, this sepal length will be zero column this one two three four so we are considering zero one two three so this is uh, what we are using zero two three and from sk learn dot cluster import k means okay then we are giving the range okay this is important that in this elbow method what we do we first have the range of zero one to ten so we are uh, first looping it to find out the optimum number of clusters that is present so if we take the range zero to ten so we uh, first we predict that it will of course between 0 to 10 a uh, 1 to 10 and we uh, put this in under k means class okay and we uh, define an empty uh, list of SSE so in this for loop what we do is for k in k means cluster which means for k in this range of 1 to 10 km is equal to k means n cluster is equal to k which means we are uh, having the cluster k and in this code what we are doing uh, first we have the k value 1 okay so for k uh, in 1 so when k equal to 1 we have km equal to k means n cluster we having one cluster and we are fitting it into this df.imp and we are then appending the km inertia which actu actually give is in uh, adding the value of the SSE uh, in this list okay so for example the first now when we print SSE we find the first is 6880 so this is the SSE SSE is actually some squared error you can find out the definition in uh, the internet so SSE is first is 680 then we when k mean plus is equal to 2 so then we are again uh, looping it and adding the SSE value to this list and here we find 152 then 78 this is the list we find and then we plot it uh, uh, on with SSE on the y axis and k means plus on the x axis so the, we name this elbow method because what we do in this elbow method because this line you will be seeing every time uh, will be like an elbow and this this is optimum point for us uh, this three because this is the point after which we do not see any sharp change in uh, the graph so we'll be choosing three as optimum value so in this question actually we have to find out the optimum number of clusters so this is the optimum number of clusters we have found that is three and we will be using it later in this code with uh, k means uh, n cluster equal to 3 with uh, okay in the maximum iteration 300 random set 0 we are fitting it okay then y means equal to in predicting the data would be, you might must be knowing that this uh, this uh, how we do like k one dot fit underscore predict we have the y means and now what is doing is that whatever rows we had it is distributing it into three clusters and naming it 1 2 and 0 so those who, which are having one will be in one cluster those we in which are named as two will be in one cluster and 
and zero uh, will be in another cluster. We'll be seeing it in uh, another code later in this program, but this one thing we have to understand that these ones will be in one cluster. Then we print the cluster centers by this code and by df.num array we convert it into array and then what we do is the most interesting we plot our uh, the we plot the uh, clusters we have formed so what we do is c is very importantly because this is the most important part of the program because y means equal to equal to one it means those which we saw having one here so we are taking those values and two what is this two this two is actually if df dot imp when we defined when we defined df dot mean you you must remember that uh, the columns were zero one two three so two was actually this petal length and three was actually this petal width so what we are doing at, uh, in this code is actually we are taking those df dot m which has shown the value of one in the y means and taking the petal length for 2 and petal width for 3 we are plotting this data so that we are doing for all the three all the three clusters we have made we are uh, doing that and labeling it as iris setosa iris virginica and versicolor so that is our predicted one our program has uh, our code has actually made cl three clusters with three different colors so this is all from this video guys i hope uh, this video has helped you and uh, if you like this video share this with you uh, share this video with your friend and consider consider uh, subscribing to our channel uh, to get more of such videos thank you guys